student. Um, and Zoom became available to the education field. We jumped on it, put in an application, got it, but then we needed to set it up. We needed to get our own domain. We needed to make it safe. We needed to uh, touch base with you know data privacy. We had um, basically the platform and the PD um, in place for the beginning of this week. So we're really only talking about three days. So just to give you kind of a perspective of how quickly things are moving and what is happening behind the scenes to make it happen. Um, in this, at the same time, we've been running um, a PD for staff and we've had a lot of engagement um, and staff, uh, teachers have been wonderful and going in and doing um, the trainings and the things that they need. Um, in addition to doing the uh, self-directed type of uh, training that we've provided, they've reached out to um, LLC staff um, and they're working together to make sure that um, they have the types of things that they want to do online. Um, and then I wanna talk a little bit about the connections. So, like I said, the big change um, in terms of what's happening from last week to this week is how we're moving learning forward um, is a blend of asynchronous and synchronous. And it is different based on what school you're in because developmentally, that's something we have to be very mindful on. Um, but as we're moving forward and we're adding uh, more synchronous um, learning. Um, I just wanted to kind of um, go through some of the things that have already been happening this week um, as our teachers have reported to us through a survey that they have been doing things like hearing students play their instruments uh, using Zoom and help tune their instruments, <laughs> using email, Google Classroom, Google Docs, and commenting through Google Chats. Uh, using presence learning, which I know Andrea will talk a little bit more about, but is something that the special services staff have been uh, engaged in. Um, using real-time conversations through Padlet. Uh, using Google Meet for morning meetings and Hangouts for questions. Flipgrid for collaboration. Responding to email simultaneously with the class and providing support. So asynchronous is something that's much more self-directed Synchronous actually has to do with all of the things that I just mentioned, as well as the Zoom and the Google Meet type of sessions that, that are very similar to what we're having right now. Um, and we have been engaged in um, setting up some guidelines for video conferencing that will go out as consistent message to everyone, um, as well as um, getting to the point where we're providing PD on the Zoom platform so that more and more um, can become more acquainted with it as we go forward. So um, that is really uh, what's going on on that end. Data privacy, again, another big, very, very quickly changing area. Um, at the beginning of the week, the um, governor um, and the commissioner came out and basically said, we're, we're being very mindful of data privacy. We're going to keep that, obviously, you know, keep being very mindful of that. But at the same time, we want to fast track and provide the resources that we need to for our teachers and our students. Um, that has given us the opportunity to fast track about 25 different resources that provide support for our PE teachers, our music teachers, um, a variety of special services types of resources, ebooks and e resource platforms, um, and a few others that. Basically, when you look at all the grade levels, all of the different students, all the different needs, we do actually need a variety of different things to be able to address um, learning for everyone. Um, and uh, finally, I just want to say that the connectedness that's happening, the collaboration that's happening, the learning that's happening, which is not a curve, but a very, very steep going up kind of thing, um, that has just been amazing. I like to kid that um, I had a three-year digital learning strategic plan that I presented to the board, and that, that has now become a five-day um, strategic plan. And that's probably not all that um, uh, much of an untruth, uh, considering how much we have had to do in such a short period of time. And, um, you know, as Kevin was saying, we've had um, so much help and we've had a lot of people on the front lines just being there and supporting each other, um, our LLC staff, our tech instru instructional leaders, our instructional coaches, our administrators, 
um, and all of the teachers that support each other have been all part of this um, and have done a phenomenal job. So, um, you know, we're only in uh, day four of e-learning 2.0, and I look forward to uh, more. Um, one of the things I'm also very wary of, um, not wary of, but uh, aware of, is um, that our parents may need some support in terms of navigating some of the tools. And we're going out to parents to ask for what they feel they need. And I would like to do some webinars similar to our digital learning workshops that we've done you know, face to face in the schools when we've been in the schools through Zoom so that we can provide that kind of support for our parent community as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Hey, Fran, hey, Mandy. Wow. Um, question. So you mentioned it's a blend of synchronous and asynchronous. What do you see it looking like in four weeks? Like, are we getting, I'm just curious, I know where we are now, we're getting to a point. I think yes. it's helpful to talk about what is the ideal point that you would like to, and maybe. Well, and I, yeah, and I don't know if there's an ideal point um, that we can say this is consistent. I think it depends. Um, and it depends on the uh, grade level, it depends on the subject area, um, it depends on what the curriculum is and how it's best delivered. I do believe, um, and research shows that um, a mix is really the ideal. So having, for example, in, in you know, especially at secondary, it's a little bit different, um, having, um, you know, content delivered or, you know, like a mini lesson, for example, delivered synchronously, um, and then having engagement through discussions um, and, you know, assignments um, and then feedback and then an exit assessment. Um, and that might be different. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about, to be quite honest, is how much time students end up on the screen. So screen time is actually a concern for me. Um, and, you know, as we go along, I'd like to see the ramping up of the synchronous with the asynchronous but also being mindful of how much time students are spending in front of a screen, which is really a very difficult balancing act, I believe. Yeah. No, I just think it's good to set expectations that we're never trying to get to a full synchronous day of learning. It'll we aren't. Yep. No. Awesome. No. And also, think, go ahead. Well, I also just want to, you know, also make, you know, put the point out that especially with the younger ones that need more supervision over their digital use. You know, having more required kind of face time puts, makes it harder for parents to kind of organize their day in a way that may be easier for them. Yep. Taking into account their schedule and also, you know, younger children and older children and the ability to be independent and not independent. Mm -hmm. And it also, um, as the situation unfolds and households, um, you know, as, as virus numbers increase and households have to um, adapt to that environment as well, I also don't want there to be a feeling of like disconnection within the community if a child is unable to participate because of those mm -hmm. circumstances. So, I just want to be mindful of, you know, how we frame the, the um, synchronous learning going, going forward mm -hmm. in terms of having content that might be on a synchronous, in, in a synchronous platform that then becomes, that's the only way that that information is then, you know, given forward. And if somebody is unable to participate at that time, then how do they stay a part of the overall learning environment? So it's, it's lots of puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. And I'm in, as a parent, I'm in awe of what's um, been going on. And, um, and I too have also been, you know, trying to be flexible with myself and my children and figuring out our schedule and how things work and how they learn, because that's not something that I've, been a part of and um so those were just some things that i wanted to you know throw out there just to, as we start thinking about how we ramp up in the coming in the coming weeks 
Yeah, Ruth, I appreciate all of those comments. And I think, um, you know, we just, we need to keep renaming for everybody. This is really hard. And, you know, as um, we've worked with staff and planning, everybody is um, very aware and very sensitive to um, the load and the burden that this is putting on parents, you know, particularly parents of young children who require, require much more adult structure, um, but even parents of our older students. And so, um, you know, we just, we need to uh, just remind ourselves that this is really hard and we're being asked to do something uh, or we're choosing to do something in a very short period of time. I was encouraged. We surveyed our staff a couple of days ago and we wanted to just get a sense of um, what people were up to across the district in terms of sync and async activities. Um, and we also wanted to just get a sense of people's readiness. And I was struck by um, the large number of teachers at every age level. Um, who felt like they were ready to do more synchronous type of activities. So um, Fran and her team is, um, have been working. Um, they've developed some guidelines that we're going to share with administrators tomorrow and then push out to staff and then uh, correspondingly um, just set up some additional um, coaching uh, opportunities as well as some professional learning opportunities. So um, people who are ready can uh, jump into those uh, waters and start swimming uh, you know, really quickly. But um, you know, we're, we are absolutely attentive to um, the complexity of this endeavor and the um, broad diversity of home experiences um, for people. And so I think that just needs to be uh, repeated over and over again. Um, at this point, I wanted to give the floor to Andre Leonardi, who has also been uh, working double time with her staff um, to provide an update and also to talk to us about presence learning. Yeah, Kevin, if I may. Uh, before Andrea comes on, just a, a quick comment. Uh, we've all seen and we've all received a number of e emails and messages from parents. And I think universally, they are positive, which is really an incredible accomplishment uh, to Fran, to Andrea, and to all the, the, the principals, every one of you and your guys who have who are on the battlefield every day i'm just overwhelmed and, and thrilled at, at the amount of positive feedback that is coming from parents obviously there are questions and there are what suggestions or whatever but it is truly remarkable what you guys have accomplished mm -hmm. in such an incredibly short period of time uh I, I i'm just overwhelmed by it the feedback from the parents that i've seen the messages we've gotten Universally, they're supportive, they're, they're positive, they're encouraging, and they're thankful. And I want to pass that along personally, just from me to all of you guys, your principals, your staffs, et cetera. You know, the little things that teachers are doing to, to make the students continue to feel connected. It, it, it is truly a remarkable accomplishment in, in my view. And I just sincerely thank each and every one of you and your staffs. Or it's not easy. We're in a whole new paradigm. We're adapting, we're flexible, we're learning, and we're, we will continue to get better at what we're doing. There's no doubt in my mind. So thank you so much, each and every one of you. Thanks, Glenn. I had one question for Fran. Um, you mentioned teacher training. Um, you know, since all, so many of these tools are, you know, are kind of coming faster than the tech plan had it. Um, how are you managing planning? Is there enough time for that? Um, what, what's your assessment of that? So um, we were uh, fortunate because last week as we were going through the first week and, and a different iteration of the plan, we had um, teachers available for um, participating and engaging in professional learning. Um, when we knew that was going to happen, which was probably like Monday or Tuesday, I can't even recall, every day seems like such a long time now, um, we put out a, a professional um, development tool um, that um, teachers were then able to engage in. And it ranged from, you know, Google Classroom basics um, to more um, sophisticated, um, you know, going into Google Hangout, um, working with some of the tools that I mentioned, like Flipgrid, Screencastify to do recorded mini lessons. Um, and I can actually track the um, usage on that tool. Um, and um, every day, I have up to about 200 teachers that are continually engaging in that. 
um, and doing some um, work, um, you know, in that tool. Um, in addition to that, we have um, our staff that's right in the schools working in IETs and working uh, with departments um, and also offering their services for anyone to actually go in and do a webinar with them. So we have our entire LLC staff and tech instructional leaders available uh, and they've been making themselves available based on what the needs are. Um, so it has been it has been amazing because as teachers find the needs, um, they have absolutely um, risen to the challenge and um, been um, engaged in uh, professional learning. So um, my assessment is that it's going to continue, that we're all learning. I'm learning along with everybody else and that we will definitely, um, you know, continue offering. Um, I, 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 yeah, I just wanted to um, sort of make the point that, um, you know, there's a difference between teachers who are making decisions about whether to do synchronous or asynchronous, um, and they have their subject area and their kids and the developmental needs to balance and the assignments and all of that, um, versus teachers that just aren't comfortable enough to do it. So as long as we can bring that number yep. down to close to zero, um, yep. that would be great. And I realize that's going to take time, and it sounds like there's been a lot already going on. Yep. So thank you. Yeah, yep. Fran, I have a quick question, if I may. To what extent are we use, is Khan Academy part of what we're doing? Do we use them at all? Huh? Absolutely. Um, we have Khan Academy and Khan Academy for kids. Yeah, I think they are incredible. Yep. They, okay, good, good. They, so have, we are. they have been phenomenal and they've put out their own essentially scope and sequence of yeah. suggestions of what to use, what videos to use, one for yeah. what objectives and standards. They yeah. have been wonderful. Yeah, it's remarkable. I'm on there almost every day for something and it's just, it really is and a remarkable. They've expanded. Resource. They've huh? totally, like, they started math and now they're expanded into every subject yeah. area. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask one question about the synchronous learning? Is there some sort of expectation for our teachers to provide some sort of synchronous learning? Have we so, asked our at all? Say, I guess I know I'm sorry, say that again. I'm, I didn't. Is there some sort of expectation for our teachers to have some sort of synchronous learning at some point? So we are definitely encouraging a mix, like I said, the synchronous and asynchronous. And I think that within teams and within um, that's developing. We're already finding that about half of our teachers are already, at least at the secondary level, are engaging in synchronous um, learning um, already. So, and as we're doing the uh, PD going into the following week and they're working with their curriculum, I feel like that will be um, increased. I don't know about the expectation, because again, I, like I said, it, I feel like this is really up to the professionals, the teachers who know really what's gonna work best for that a particular uh, lesson. And um, I think that we'll see some uh, wonderful things coming out of them. I think, and I agree with you, I think what the difficult part of this is that you have some teachers doing it and some not, um, even within the same subject level or matter. So it's, it's kind of hard for some parents to see their kids engaging with teachers in the same subject when yeah. somebody else's is not. Yeah, and it's early, it's definitely early. So um, that should, you know, within the third and fourth week that there should be some, some more consistency. Okay. And maybe you guys are getting to this later. I mean, we had, you guys had mentioned some sort of a parent survey. Um, and I know we actually received one today for my son's team. Um, is that going for everybody so that parents can chime in and share what they have concerns about? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Kevin can uh, answer this. There's a, there's going to be a survey going out tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. So answered. There you go. I'm looking at the time, and we really um, sort of need to keep this going. So um, I don't know. Kevin, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to uh, give the floor to Andrea, who's going to give us uh, a very high-level overview and uh, talk to us about special services and presence learning. OK. So special services. Since last week when we spoke, I uh, announced last week that we had contracted with presence learning um, as one piece of the special education puzzle. And if you remember, Presence Learning is a company that's been in the teletherapy world for about 10 years. They're a national leader in this work. And our staff has been working with them now for 
the past, uh, today was day four, um, getting training in the use of the platform and many of our speech pathologists, our OTs, um, and our, our behavioral mental health psychologists and social workers and some school counselors have been out uh, introducing families to the uh, platform itself, testing some things out this week. This week has been a test week. Um, we are going live on uh, Monday, and our goal is to ramp up those services to be able to provide the level of service as outlined in each child's IEP, albeit virtually. So group services will be group, and individual services will be individual, um, and the staff will be working with the families to schedule those services um, with the family so they fit into the family schedules. That's going to be probably the the hardest part is going to be making sure we schedule all those services. Um, it's one thing when we have the kids for seven hours in a school, to we have a captive audience to schedule services. This is going to be a little more challenging, but we're looking forward to working with the families. Um, our special ed teachers and special ed service providers have been connecting with students and families using Google Hangouts and Zoom and presence learning this week to kind of get the kids used to the video platforms get used to engaging with their teachers and their therapists um, in this kind of format. Um, and so there's been a lot of active play back and forth with the staffs. Um, but next week we ramp up, um, I'm calling it the ramp up and roll out. So we're gonna ramp up and roll out all of the direct services. Um, I personally can't thank the staff enough um, for the work they've done over the past um, almost, almost two weeks. Um, to get ready to be able to implement uh, individualized education plans in this kind of format. It has been um, Mount Everest and they have been climbing it without oxygen, ta oxygen tanks. So uh, they're working very, very hard. Um, and I know it's not as front facing to the families yet, but I think families will begin to be um, very impressed with what they're, what they're about to see. Um, Genesis, I'm meeting with Genesis in morning meeting every day. We meet and set goals, and the teachers are working individually and in small group with students on uh, all of their curriculum areas, so that's going well. The kids are, um, I have been impressed with the kids. They are at that morning meeting right on time in a format just like this, um, and the kids are really engaged. They're giving us a lot of good feedback about what's working and what's not. Um, and they're really part of building the process for Genesis. So um, those kids are doing well. Um, and many of our secondary folks are collaborating with their general ed teachers in the collaborative classes, um, their co-taught class environments, and doing some, um, some small group instruction um, with kids who may need assistance in particular assignment areas. So we're moving forward. We're not there yet. Um, but I'm very pleased with the progress, progress special ed has made in such a short time. Um, I know our mental health staff is connecting with kids and with families. Um, Melissa and Sharon and I have been connecting with our students who are um, in outplacements who are not receiving services so that we can work with those families to make sure they have, um, they have plans for how they're going to work in this environment. Um, and so we're moving forward and I couldn't be more please, but the, the, uh, the staff needs all the kudos for sure. Yeah, Andrea, the, yeah. Uh, the students that are in outplacement, and there are a number of them who are still in their facilities, correct? Have Some any, come, have any come back to residential us? Residential placement are still in their residences, yes. So none of them have come back to us yet? Some have. Oh, because they, it Some strikes have. me that they're going to be the most difficult ones perhaps to... Uh, to work with and uh, okay. Each school is different. Some yeah. stu schools have closed down and sent their students home. Some mm -hmm. schools have remained open. Um, as long as their kids ne don't go home, they can't right. leave and come back. They have to either stay or go. Um, and so families have made some decisions in those cases. Um, but either decision, um, we're working with the families to make sure that they're getting um, they're getting as much support as they can from their schools and their e-learning plans and also any support that they can from us. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Andrea, you mentioned last week that um, this platform, um, you know, took some money to do, which is fine, and, and we have it within our budget, according to Anne. Do you anticipate any other resources that you will need to, you know, on a large scale to uh, deliver special ed um, appropriate services? I, I don't anticipate any other large scale um, financial investments right now in this format. Um, but I do anticipate that when this is all over, we'll be discussing a lot of different potential issues of impact to our children with disabilities um, that may bear costs. Okay, so that, I just want to make sure that we have resources. I think we need to be careful to understand that. But mm -hmm. for right now, I think the investment in presence learning is going to give us a big boost to provide service. Okay, I, th I think the board just wants to make sure you have the resources you need now and then obviously we can anticipate more all right thank you thank you andre i've heard a lot of really great feedback um with how families are doing and you all reaching out to them um a few families have not heard from people do you want them to reach out directly to therapists or who should they reach out to um their first their first line is to their case manager um okay. typically their special education teacher or if they're receiving speech as their only service it would be their speech pathologist um, okay. Under 504, it would be their school counselor. So if they have yet to hear from their case manager um, or from a team member to talk about how they're going to roll these services out, they should reach out to them. Okay, thanks. Um, and if they're unsatisfied, then to Sharon, Melissa, or myself, and we can help. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm not sure if this is about. Um, special education, but in general, I, I just want to make sure that all the parents are engaged. Um, I, I do know personally that there have been teachers that have been reaching out to me to say, Hey, you know what, your student's not doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, and my concern is parents can go on to, um, Google classroom and, and check things, but I feel that there's a little bit of a gap and how are we supposed to know as parents that our kids are doing everything they should be doing even if I'm overhearing conversations with teachers but maybe there's something else that isn't happening um I don't know Kevin if that's for you or for principals yeah. or just to answer later. You know, I think when we uh, set up expectations, um, I think our staff was fully aware that, um, you know, the onus is on them to reach out. Um, this is, of course, a partnership. So I would say to everybody in this new frontier, if you have a concern or a worry that your, your child might not be getting enough work or maybe confused with work or what the case could be, um, then you, you shouldn't wait for a teacher to reach out to you. Uh, Gretchen, you know, with five kids in the system, I'll tell you, um, I've heard from a range of teachers. Um, and so I think, you know, while it may not be everyone's experience, I do um, hear quite a bit of talk of teachers reaching out and connecting with either with kids directly or with parents. But um, again, for everybody, you know, if you have a concern or a question, you shouldn't hesitate um, because this is, this is a partnership and we are figuring it out together. Well, well, I think my main concern personally, and I'm hoping that there's other people behind me, I ask my kids, hey, did you do this? Or, or is everything good? Everything's good. Mom, I did it. I did it. And, and so for a few days, I'm like, great, everything's great. And then I get a call from a teacher and they're like, yeah, no, not so great. So it's just one of those, like, I'm trying to you know, I want all the parents to be able to connect. Like your your kids are saying one thing, the teachers are thinking another. I want it all to be working, sure. and so. Yep. So I would. I would just for a second. Yep. Go ahead. Um, we are encouraging staff. We understand that you know each and every family is experiencing this differently, um, and so we're trying to work directly and individually with families. Some families are struggling more than others to get into a rhythm of this. Some families are kind of, you know, in lockstep and ready to go. Some kids are, they're having trouble adjusting to this new learning format and they, they're not, 
Um, they think they're doing everything they need to do, but they may not be quite reaching the expectation yet. Um, so remember, it's, it's as new for them and for all of you as it is for all of us. And so again, it's about, um, I'm asking folks to connect with us, connect, we'll connect with you, and we're gonna ask you, how's it going in your household? Um, and that may require us to be flexible and we may have, we may need to work with you to, to think about, you know, if you have three or four students in three or four different buildings, in all different kinds of ways, that's gonna be a challenge. So um, this really is gonna be about helping each and every family um, get through this healthy, mentally healthy, and learning. And so are teachers at least giving an idea to parents like, okay, we're gonna do this, or, and I personally had something where there was a Google Hangouts thing that wasn't happening, on my daughter's side but i didn't know until the teacher told me um are there and i and andrea i'm not sure if it's you or to kevin or to whoever but i as far as other parents are concerned how are we supposed to know if our if our kids are actually connecting to all their teachers and and getting everything that they're supposed to be getting yeah, again, Gretchen, I would say, you know, given the... Um, I'm going to jump in here and say that... Debbie, I think we lost you. Yeah, her screen. Back to you, Kevin. I know. Go ahead. Oh. Back. Debbie, so you're, you, uh, we didn't hear what your comment was. Uh, Sorry. So go ahead and go on. back up. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. My, I, for whatever reason, my internet doesn't like me tonight. Um, I, I think part of the place to put that, Gretchen, and all parents who are listening, is when the when we um, I heard a mention a couple of times about a survey going out. Um, so you know, make that part of the feedback is you know more proactive ways for students to realize or parents to understand what what the expectations are. And I lost the connection maybe again, but that's all. Yep, no, we heard that. That was- uh, We heard most of it. Thank you. Great, why don't we move on to the principals? I know they're anxious to provide building by building updates. So Kathy, um, why don't we start with you at Miller Driscoll? And we'll just do brief updates. All right, good evening, everyone. So um, first I wanna say thanks to Lexi for her adorable video that Kevin shared with you. When I talked to um, her mom and to Lexi on the phone today to see if they would be willing to share, Lexi was so excited. She wasn't really sure what it meant, but I told her basically she was gonna be on TV. So she was very excited. And her mom was very complimentary of everything we've been doing um, and very complimentary of their amazing teacher, Scott Dempsey. Um, and I will have to say, you know, I'm glad that Glenn spoke up because I think overall, the feedback that we're getting um, from students, from teachers, from parents is incredibly positive. So uh, to that, you know, with that said, I think there are many things we did this week that we're very proud of. Um, we have many lessons available for the kids in reading, writing, math, art, music, PE, um, and even our developmental guidance curriculum. Um, we do have a lot of consistency across grade levels and teams are planning together um, to provide information to parents um, on what they want the students to follow up on and what they would like uh, students to post to be able to demonstrate their learning. Um, teachers are also working on staying connected and while it's asynchronous at the point, um, at this point the teachers are staying connected through morning message um, videos, um, through emails with the kids and all of that. Um, right now, and I think, you know, Ruth's comment is, you know, sort of what we're hearing from parents right now, a lot of parents appreciate being able to access the materials when it's convenient for them. So while we'll, while we'll start to look at synchronous opportunities, I do think it's hard for some of our um, littlest learners to be sitting in front of a computer when no one's there, that's not gonna happen. Um, and also to be sitting in front of a computer for a long time. So what's kind of nice is with some of the kids at the um, upper grades who are doing some synchronous um, activities, the parents are able to help them with that and then they can access 
more of what we're making available at different times. Um, and I have to say, you know, I know Fran talked about this, but the collaboration um, with the teachers is absolutely incredible. What they've put together in a short amount of time, I think, you know, just um, it's, it's sort of a, a double-edged sword because you see what they've put together in a short amount of time and then everybody says, well, what about this next thing? And what about this next thing? And um, so it's like, so that's a good thing. And it's also a, a piece where we have to kind of gauge and slow down and, and make sure that everybody can, you know, access what we're putting out there. So for us, um, we are trying our best to keep things developmentally appropriate, um, but also fun, as you could see from our little friend, Lexi. Um, we're also trying to make sure um, that we're looking at some of the challenges that people are having. We, um, I would normally send plans out on Sunday evening to parents for the entire week ahead. So we got feedback that that was a little too late. They wanted their weekend to be able to digest before they helped their kiddos on Monday. So the plans will all start going out on Friday now, which I think will be incredible. Um, we are looking at some options for um, books uh, because again, our youngest readers uh, fly through their books pretty quickly. And so we're working with Fran on some options. And so more of those will also come out next week. Um, I think it's also, you know, the biggest challenges we've heard are from parents who have children in multiple schools. And so I have a lot of empathy um, for those parents. I'm sure it's very hard managing everything. Um, we did have some glitches with Padlet at the beginning of the week. Um, but most people who, you know, kind of were very frustrated on Monday by the time, um, you know, we reached out to them on Tuesday, things were much better. And I know Fran you know, Fran's talking to the CEO of every every tech company out there, I think. So um, she worked some magic and things are, are much more um, accessible. Um, like Andrea presented, special ed and related service are providing um, supports to kids on an individual basis. And for students who have multiple service providers, they're also trying to organize that information into one document. So parents will get one, um, Google Doc that has the lessons for special ed, that has the times that related service might be doing things through presence learning, um, and the interventionists are doing the same thing. So we're, we really are trying to streamline. I know at the beginning of the week, you know, we see the teacher emails that go out to whole classes and it was, here's my Padlet, and then it was like, oh wait, I forgot to connect it, oh wait, this, and you know, as the week has gone on in just a few short days, I feel like things are much more um, streamlined and um, so I have to say you know again huge thanks to our tech team huge thanks to our teachers even our paras are you know making videos and um, putting messages out to kids so you know so we're we're really proud I'm re I'm really proud of everything they've done any questions Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate it. Why don't we move on to uh, Dr. Falcone? All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm using a earphones for the first time. Everybody can hear me. Yes. Yes, you're doing great. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I just want to reiterate what Kathy has said. Um, this has been a lot um, for all of our teachers, and they really um, have been un unbelievable. Um, I think it's uh, interesting. The feedback that we get has been very positive. Um, you know, we've spent a lot of time just letting families know that we are prov providing a schedule and that they really need to um, take that schedule and make it uh, match their needs. Um, you know, we have everybody who, from the range of families who want scheduled from like 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. to like not, you know, nothing scheduled and everything being flex. So, you know, we're doing our best to try to meet everybody's needs. Um, the one of the biggest things we're doing is shifting to different times next week. So we'll be starting at nine o'clock, which is a little more in line with um, Miller Driscoll. So I think that'll be um, big for families. And we're ending at two o'clock. So it's still even a little bit earlier, but we're, we're gonna have an extension block at the end of the day. Um, you know, even with all the schools, when you shorten the learning time um, to 30 minutes, it's, it's a very fast turnaround to be able to, um, you know, 
provide direct instruction and independent practice and any type of um, formative assessment or what have you. So we do have um, the extension block for further additional um, independent practice or if we have um, students that might need additional small group instruction or if a student wants to participate in any type of enrichment. So we're going to go forward with that um, with that plan. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I don't know what just happened. My whole screen just changed. Sorry about yeah, that. I'm not sure what that. Um... Okay, so I'm just going to keep going thinking yeah, everybody can hear me. Going. All right. Um, so for, um, we'll be moving into um, new units of study and reading and writing starting week four. Um, we really tried to tackle the read aloud and uh, morning meeting because we felt like those were the community building parts. And so we really wanted to tackle that part first and got a real head start on math and getting the students into that. And so we'll be moving in, um, working with Teachers College has created a whole new online um, unit of study and a whole bunch of resources. So we'll be learning a little bit more about that tomorrow through a workshop. Um, what's been very difficult with this is we kind of left our school without any of our curriculum materials. So that's been a little bit of a challenge for everybody. So we're thankful that those units are coming out and um, we'll be starting that. So the, the reading and writing have really continued from what we were doing when we left, which was um, really focused in on close reading, nonfiction, some more authentic writing process experiences. And so we'll continue that into next week. Um, for synchronous learning, a lot of people have been asking about synchronous and asynchronous, and a lot of it is the same um, for Kathy. It's, it's been a little bit of a challenge um, like I said, some families really um, are looking for, they'd be happy if there was somebody kind of at, in front of them on the computer the whole time leading the kids through, but that's not realistic because every kid sitting out there um, participating in the learning isn't available like that. So we are going to kind of continue to do probably pre-videoed, um, direct instruction the way we started with the math and we'll be moving into that with um, the reading and the writing mini lessons. Um, but then also it's really the Google Hangout is really designed to really serve no more than five in a group. Right now when we're using Zoom, we can see all of you guys. When you meet in a, um, through Google Hangout, you could only see up to five and it's really difficult to navigate any kind of whole group learning in that environment. So we're looking as we move forward. Um, right now, only the adults in our school are using any type of Zoom platform. So as we go forward, we're looking um, at using that um, with our students and it might provide some more opportunities for us. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it. I think Kathy really shared a lot. Um, if anybody has any questions, happy to answer anything. Great, why don't we move on to um, Lauren. Okay. Thanks, Jen, appreciate it. Yep. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are hard at work at the E version of Middlebrook, and I just um, wanna add my kudos to um, the incredible amount of collaboration that I've seen, um, both within and beyond our building. The staff has been amazing. Uh, we celebrate the heroes of our LLC team and um, applaud Fran and the amazing turnaround time that she's able to give us in terms of being responsive. And um, she's got a great team at Middlebrook. Um, I think that my teachers are up and running. They are trying, I, I wanna preface my comments by saying 100% of the decisions that the Middlebrook teachers are making is based on trying to do what's right for the needs of children. And while they certainly want to keep um, skills growing and learning fresh, um, we, 100% of the time we'll make the choice that we think is going to be supportive of student wellness, both physical wellness and uh, social and emotional wellness. Um, so most of our um, team leaders sent out an opportunity for parents to give team-based feedback today. Um, uh, it's possible that a couple of those won't go out until tomorrow. Um, and one of the things we're really trying to pay attention to is listening to the feedback parents and students give us about how long various tasks are taking in this format. because. This is brand new learning for us. Um, 
the teachers are in a really significant learning curve, but I think they've done uh, magnificent work. Um, there's a high degree of alignment in terms of content that is being shared um, across teachers of the same um, content, but they are trying to be very personalized in um, the responses and support that they give to students. So our students are online and working hard. They are um, submitting work every day. They're getting personalized feedback from their teachers. Um, and I think that probably where we're at right now is really trying to help bo both, um, maybe all, all of our stakeholder groups, our parents, our students, and our teachers um, strike a balance that is healthy. Um, so I just, again, um, I feel like Every, I, everywhere I go, I, I'm working with teachers who are just reporting um, out on the work they're doing, and I'm just universally impressed and um, proud and pleased. I'm sure that we are dropping balls um, in, because we do have, you know, eight teachers working with students in the same day um, or upwards of that for kids with more complex programs. And so we really invite parents to reach out if they have questions, I've shared out a um, question document that goes to um, uh, Middlebrook administrators, but of course, team leaders and case managers are ready to be um, conduits for parent questions also. So if any parent is sitting at home feeling like um, they have a need that isn't being addressed, I really welcome the opportunity. If you'd um, send the question to the appropriate folks, we'd love to help um, work in partnership with you. Any questions? Thanks, Lauren. Great, go ahead, Bob. So yeah, good evening to our uh, Board of Education and our Wilton High School Warrior Nation. I'd like to begin with a message to our students and about our students. Um, I wanna emphasize that we recognize that this is very, very new and an unexpected situation to our students. Um, in particular, we're very sensitive to this great Wilton High School graduating class of 2020 and their end of year events, including proms and graduation. Um, we've had to make some decisions around canceling events, but we're going to try to remain hopeful that we can still pull off some of these events and work together on them. I would encourage all of our seniors, let's keep our eyes on the prize of graduation, which of course still is June 13th, so let's remain excited about that. Our staff has been working amazingly and tirelessly to support all of our students. Our support staff, our school counselors, and our administrators have been reaching out to ensure that those who require additional support in this challenging time are receiving it. Um, this week, we and they have focused on specific service delivery of individual counseling and group services, and they've also begun to assess any students and families with specific needs that are emerging or have emerged from this current situation, which, as I said, is just really challenging for our students and our families, our parents. And so know that we are listening and we're very sensitive to that. We are teaming and we're communicating so that we will not miss students or let students fall through the cracks. Uh, for example, I had a very good planning session today with Melissa Barrett and Kim Zemo and Pam Scott to make sure that we're communicating, that we have mechanisms in place to ensure that school counselors are communicating with teachers, and administrators and social workers were necessary. So um, to the great point, I think that Mr. Hemerly raised a week ago, know that we are really working to stay on top of that and support our kids. And that's really what we're here for and our families. You know, our, our school community, I, I marvel sometimes and I have to reflect on how supportive uh, people are and we all really are. I, I do wanna, again, briefly, because so many have done so, thank and reiterate that our teachers, um, they've made really, really good strides with, with what I would describe as our newer, newer normal with e-learning. They're focused on connecting with their students, navigating these new technologies and the challenges presented in the e-learning. Our teachers are finding the planning periods before and after school very, very helpful as they get together and collaborate around the important topics, you know, curriculum, instructional experiences, targeted student learning outcomes. I would encourage our student and our parent community, community to recognize that things will converge as we engage in these deeper conversations around instruction, quality instructional experiences, and also some of what we've alluded to already as professional educators is what is this effective balance between synchronous and asynchronous learning? Um, the feedback from teachers suggests there has been a lot of synchronous learning. 
Um, that is not the panacea. That is not the main goal, as Fran had stated. You know, I think we need to find the right blend of these two approaches so that we can maximize student learning. So I would encourage our entire community, our Board of Ed and everybody, and our board has already reiterated this, you know, let's believe in and support our educators because this is what we need to do right now. And I would again remind us we're in day four right now of this more robust e-learning platform. Um, I acknowledge, you know, in high school it is not yet perfect, um, but we will continue in this iterative process um, and, and make it develop appropriate. This is not an event. A lot of people are working really, really concertedly to improve this. Uh, regarding the e-learning template, which of course states the student learning outcomes and some of the lessons that teachers are implementing, our teachers are finding the, the template helpful. I think the very, very vast majority, as I did a little bit of surveying today, are using them. I hope that the students and the families are also finding them helpful. I think it's just a good way for parents to check in um, to Mrs. Jean's good question. You know, what is it that we can do as parents to be mindful of what students are doing and the extent to which they're fulfilling their requirements? And I think it's serving as a consistent platform for our students between teachers. Uh, one of the issues that has arisen, and I, I do want to address this, is um, the issue of assessment and grading. Uh, this is an important topic in the school community. I don't, I don't want to overdwell on it, but I did want to share some rationale. I shared with our leadership team and our staff and our students and our parent community this week that we did reach what I believe to be an informed decision on awarding third quarter grades for our students. And some of the rationale behind this decision included um, essentially the following. Uh, our academic quarters are 45 days in length. Our students and our staff had 30 days, which is to say, of course, six weeks of what I might describe as regular instruction before this very abrupt shift to e-learning. And there will be approximately 18 e-learning days that we are engaged in right now. So I canvass our academic departments to solicit feedback on the extent to which they would be in a position to award valid quarter three grades. The very, very vast majority of our departments and teachers almost unequivocally indicated that they would be in a position to do so. And they also indicated that they felt they needed more time in the third quarter, which I would also interject that some parents have requested indicated, and we've listened. So what we've done is we've extended quarter three to April 8th in an effort to give students more time to learn and to demonstrate what they know and what they're able to do and also for teachers to evaluate this. So in the coming weeks and days, days and weeks, teams of teachers and instructional leaders and administrators will be engaged in blending the 30-day regular assessment period with the 18 e-learning days. And again, I would ask the school community to be patient as our dedicated educators engage in this process. The teachers will be communicating directly with students over the next week about how students would ultimately be assessed. I think that's fair. We want to give the students an opportunity to know this is how your grades will be computed and try to reduce any anxiety they may have and then support them and really have them focus mostly on the reconnected fabric of the relationship between the teachers and the students and also what they're ultimately learning, which is the most important thing. So, you know, in closing, I want to pledge to our high school community. Um, I value all of your roles in our partnership, and we will meet this challenge together. It is an iterative process, and uh, we will get there. And, and I just want to thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Any questions for Dr. O'Donnell? No, Kevin, I, not, not necessarily for Bob, but, but I think it's important for everyone who is watching and listening to know that all of this work that each of these principals is talking about doing and has been done by their staffs, by their teachers, by their whatever, is being done remotely. You know, they aren't sitting in meetings, you know, doing all this, all this planning. They're doing it either in conference calls or, yeah. You know, and it's remarkable. I mean, it's just not easily done, the amount of work, the amount of effort. Andrea and her folks, uh, Fran and her folks, I mean, they're not meeting face to face with a whole you know, group of people to do all this work. And I, I just think it's remarkable what, what they're accomplishing. I really do. Thanks for saying that, Glenn. Um, I just want to add that um, most of what we've um, heard uh, to Glenn's point 
um, in comments and emails has been positive and much of what we've heard tonight has been positive. Behind it on the on the professionals part and we do need you to get stronger. Um, there's some uh, also some very good issues and questions that have been raised and will continue to be I think our best um, way of dealing with that is the uh, communication um, to the extent that the principals um, as constantly as can be uh, hoped for and that um, parents are also um, realizing and I'm hoping um, taking advantage of the fact that uh, please do reach out because the only way this works is if we keep the partnership going uh, and we can you know address the the issues and the questions as they arise and uh, be assured that maybe nothing's going to change overnight or with a magic wand um, keep finding out from parents and the users and the students how it's going uh, the better and so I love the idea of the surveys. I love the idea of all the updates from uh, the district every night. I also love the messaging from the principals. I love the outreach of the counselors, the special ed staff. I think that's um, probably the only thing or the main thing that will keep this moving is the partnership. So it's gotta be interactive um, and we've gotta hear to everyone and um, I know all our board members um, understand how complicated it is. Uh, it is not a smooth path every day but by and large uh, the news tonight has been very heartening so thank you thank you and thank you great all right so uh, moving right along um, we have made a uh, few minor expenditures. So we have um, Ann Lenses on with us, and I just wanted to take a minute and talk about um, finances, not in any great detail. Um, but Ann, can you um, unmute your mic? Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. So we just want to talk a little bit about, um, we had uh, at a previous board meeting set aside $160,000. Um, we've made a few expenditures. We've got a few more things planned. You can just give the board an update of where we are. Well, as you know, just to remind everybody, we did freeze the budget when this first started coming down to protect where we wanted to go with it. We did identify the 160000 which we're going through right now between Fran and Eric and uh, SPED to make sure we're covering their immediate needs. And as we go through the rest of the budget and what we've frozen to see where the additional savings are so that we can make sure that we continue to support the e-learning and uh, SPED and um, the ongoing needs. Great, thank you. We've also asked um, each of those uh, folks, Fran and company, as best they're able to forecast um, what the needs might be going out with the assumption that we're going to do this for the rest of this school year. Yeah. So we know we have a, a need for additional um, textbooks and ebooks and um, some other curriculum resources. So um, as we gather that information um, and get more granular in terms of the finances, we'll come back to the board with a, a report on. Or yes. Great. I don't think there was um, in terms of the category. Of e All right, and we were. We, um, yep. Go ahead. I, No, I, I think we. Sorry. Not sure you can hear me, but I think we got a good update tonight. So, um, you hear me? Uh, you're you're in and out. My um, what I've been able to piece out is that we're ready to move on to the uh, next agenda item, which is just a brief discussion of the fiscal year twenty one budget. Okay, because can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I'll just make it brief before my internet continues to slow down. Um, I think uh, you already alluded to it before, um, and it's in Lynn Vanderslice's um, update uh, interview today, but the whole budget process is changed. It's postponed in terms of any big decisions. Um, she's correct in that um, uh, uh, both Jeff Rudishauer, I think, and certainly I agree that um, big decisions are postponed. 
um, the process this year is not going to look normal. The idea of an annual town meeting, et cetera, all of that has been um, uh, sort of not going to happen in its regular form. But Lynn is very clear about wanting to at least have some avenues for public input um, when that becomes appropriate um, at the right time. So that's basically a to be determined in terms of specifics, but our timeline is um, not our timeline anymore. It's been pushed out and delayed. And as we find out you know, more um, information, et cetera, and um, uh, Lynn um, uh, confers with the various boards, we'll get a better sense of the timeline that we can put out for the public. So just understand that that whole budget process is not gonna look normal. So thank you. Um, okay, uh, we've already done the action items. Uh, we have a future bis uh, future um, uh, meeting scheduled. Are there any additional um, comments from the public? And again, if you could put your name in chat, if there are, so Kevin can call on you. All right. Okay. Uh, all right, so I want to thank everyone for attending virtually and um, certainly um, we've seen everybody's heart and souls into the effort of this e-learning um, situation and, um, and I do encourage everybody, however, to put all of this school stuff into perspective. Please do listen to Lynn Vanderslice's um, latest interview, um, The Real and Sobering Health Crisis is really what this is all about. And so we need to put, put the school efforts kind of in, in a larger perspective um, and, and see what their priorities are. Uh, very difficult time for everyone. But thank you so much for everybody's partnership and professional efforts. And um, everybody, please stay safe and healthy. And we'll, you, as you can see, the schools are communicating as much as possible. Um, and so parents, please, please, please feel free to reach out as much as possible and as often as possible. So thank you. And with that, um, our agenda is finished and I'm adjourning the meeting. So thank you so much. Thank Great. you. Good night. All right. Thank you.